Hello, this is Ken from the Computer Clan here today to show off how you can create 3D text in After Effects using the built-in Ray Tracer. And if you're interested in learning more about different kinds of software, the Computer Clan offers a low-cost, personalized, one-on-one -on -one training solution on our website. So if you'd like to learn more about different programs, I recommend you check that out. Alright, before we actually create the text, we need to go over a few housekeeping things that involve the Ray Tracer. If you already have all of your ray trace settings set up, you can skip ahead in the video using this time code. The first thing we should do is install a CUDA driver if you are using a compatible NVIDIA graphics card. Essentially, this will let the software use the GPU instead of just the CPU to render the ray trace graphics and performance will increase dramatically. So if you need to install the CUDA driver, it's right here on Adobe's website. The link is in the description. After it's installed, it's recommended that you restart your computer, however the installer does not force you to. After the CUDA driver is installed, check the settings. So go to the After Effects menu, go to Preferences, and go to Previews. Under Previews, there should be a button that says GPU Information. Click that. If the Ray Tracer is set to CPU, set it to GPU. If you have an unsupported GPU, it will not allow you to switch to it by default, but you can bypass it by using this checkbox. After those settings are changed, hit OK, and then hit OK again. Now we can start with the development of our text. So if you haven't created a new project, go to File, New, and New Project, and you'll see a blank window kind of like this. Next, go to the Composition menu and open up a new composition. The duration can be whatever, I'm just going to set it to 5 seconds. Under the Advanced tab is where we can set the Ray Tracer. Depending on your configuration, the renderer might be set to Classic 3D. However, be sure that it is set to Ray Traced 3D. Once you are done, hit OK. This alert will tell you what features of After Effects are compatible with the 3D renderer in ray trace mode. Now we are completely ready to go. Since we're just doing text for this demonstration, I'll use the text tool here, select it, and then click in the canvas. I'll just type the classic Hello World. The Character tab will let me change some of the font settings. If any tab I use is not open in your workspace, simply go to the Window menu and choose which tabs you'd like to hide or show. I'll set this to Myriad Pro. Let's do Bold. We select that and go to Bold. And then I'll just use the Align tab to get that nice and centered there. The next two things I'd like to do are add a camera and a light. So under the Layer menu, go to New and select Camera. I'll just label it as Camera 1 and hit OK. And I will also add in a light. Again, it's under the same menu, right above camera. Just add a light. We'll just keep it as light 1. And now we have our light and our camera. Now we need to enable the Hello World text as a 3D layer. There should be a button down here that looks kind of like a cube. But if it's hidden, this option in the corner here might be disabled. So click it, and then it can be enabled. And as you can see, there's an empty box right here underneath this 3D cube. This cube is a 3D layer. So if we click this, we now enable the Hello World text to be a 3D layer. Once the layer is enabled, you can already see some of the light properties applying to the text here. So now we can manipulate our light a little bit just by clicking it, just to get kind of a better view here. We can maybe just, uh, let's just highlight this part over here maybe. And we'll just keep it there for now. And I'll also use some of my camera tools which are located right here or you can press the C button. If you click and hold on this menu, you get more options. So I can orbit the camera, track the camera. I'm just going to try moving it around a bit. And I can press the C key to keep switching between my pan and orbit tools. Just to kind of manipulate the camera here. Pressing V brings me back to the default move tool. And then I can also move the light a little bit. I'm going to select the 3D text in the layer down here. And the shortcut to reveal its properties are double tapping the A key. So I'm going to do that. And as you can see, we now have geometry options and material options. I'm going to change some parameters, so I'm going to make sure this button in the lower left is on. It's called the Layer Switches pane. And I could change the parameters here by adjusting these numbers. For example, the extrusion depth is at zero, that's why it looks kind of flat. But if I crank this up a bit, you will notice we're starting to get a bit of a 3D look on there. I'm going to keep cranking that up. And as you can see, it's adjusting in the canvas here. Now we have more of a 3D look going on. 
Now, depending on your system, this canvas might update kind of slowly because it's trying to calculate all this 3D information in real time. A quick tip on how to optimize performance is to use the fast preview button here. You can have it in a fast draft mode, which renders with lower quality, but it's usually faster. And I like to use the adaptive resolution mode. So when it's adjusting settings, sometimes the quality will look lower, but then it will kind of dynamically improve the quality as the computer catches up. Because this kind of stuff can kind of bog down a system. But again, if you have the CUDA driver installed with a compatible NVIDIA system, performance should be quite a bit faster. I can also add a bevel if I want, so I can choose a different style, maybe convex, and then I can increase the depth just by dragging these numbers here. Let's see what that does. Let's crank it up a little higher. As you can see, we're starting to get a bit of a bevel. I will zoom in with the camera just to kind of get you a better look here. So now it's looking a little more metallic almost. So we have a little bit of depth on it now. Now under the materials, sometimes I like to turn some other shadow settings on. It's already accepting shadows. It can cast shadows as well. Let's see what that does. Not much in this setting because we only have one simple light and no plane. What I like to do is usually turn up reflections. So right here where it says reflection intensity, if I'm going for more of a metal look, in this example I am, I will turn the intensity up so the metal is a little more reflective. So as you can see, it's starting to reflect parts of itself now. And maybe turn up the roll off a bit. Turn down the reflection sharpness, which will make the reflection look a little more blurred and not so crisp and sharp. And maybe turn the intensity up a little bit more. And just to make some other tweaks, I'm probably going to just bring down the bevel depth a bit. And I'm going to bring down the extrusion depth. So as you can see, my canvas looks like it's in lower quality right now because I'm in that adaptive resolution mode. So the adaptive resolution is kind of optimizing the system on the fly so I can kind of get a feel for what I'm doing. And that looks quite a bit better. So I will go back to my camera tool. I'll press the C button until I get this icon here, which is just for zooming in and out here. And now I have some simple 3D text. We have a bit of a bevel, some extrusion, and a little bit of a reflection going on too. So... You can go from there and just play with whatever you want to make your own effects. Personally, I think I'm going to tweak this up a bit and make it a little bit prettier. So I'm going to expand the light settings here. And there's two options here, transform and light options. Light options has to do with things like the intensity and the color. So I can turn that up, make it nice and bright. I can make the cone angle really wide to really illuminate everything. In fact, I might just make this a point light. So it's a little more like a, an omnidirectional light source. And I'm just going to move this up here. The shadows are on right now, so that's pretty good. Let me just pan my camera here by pressing C until I get the pan tool here. So now our text should be a little more illuminated, as you can see. Those reflections and bevels look really nice. The bevels are highlighting. The shadows are making the back look darker, like the inside of the O here. It looks nice and dark. So yeah, that's looking pretty good. So let's say we want to do some simple animation. I can open up the text here and go to the Transform tab. But when you have all these things expanded and you're working in the timeline, there can be stuff all over the place. It gets kind of cluttered. So a nice shortcut is you can press R and it will bring up all the rotation settings. That applies for a lot of things. Like P applies to position. S applies to scale. And perhaps you want more than one parameter visible at a time. For example, if I want scale and rotation open, I already have the scale open, but I want to open up the rotation, I just hold down Shift and then press R. So now I have scale and rotation parameters both available in the timeline. I'll just work with rotation, so I'll just press R. And let's have it spin on the x-axis here. So the only additional thing we need to do is add a keyframe, which is this little stopwatch icon. This is where the animation will begin at zero seconds. So we'll click that. Then we'll move the playhead here to about, let's say two seconds. That's where the animation will end. As you can see, the stopwatch is highlighted. It's blue in this version. If you're using a slightly older version, it might look orange. <laughs> so then I can just type in a number here for the multiplier. So if I type in three, let's say, it should rotate three times. So now if we scrub this a bit, you will see it's rotating 
So that looks pretty nice. What I might want to do is also ease the keyframes a bit. So the animation appears more smooth and it doesn't just start and stop kind of abruptly. So what I can do is just drag a marquee box around these keyframes, right click on them and use the keyframe assistant. The easing features help us smooth out the motion. Since I have both of these selected, I'm just going to choose Easy Ease and After Effects will automatically know what to do to kind of smooth out the animation. Another little tip for working in the timeline, especially if you're on a smaller screen, is to use the Grave accent. On most keyboards, this is located directly beneath the Escape key, and the Tilde symbol is also on there. When you have a panel selected, for this example, the timeline, and you press the Grave accent, it immediately brings it full screen here so you can easily manipulate things. And then when you press it again, it brings you back to your typical workspace. So now we have our materials, our depth, our camera, our light, and a little bit of a swinging animation here. So if I try playing it back, you'll notice that this progress bar is going to chug along and it's going to try to render out all the frames. It's going to go kind of slow, but it's actually loading this into the RAM and we can also use the RAM preview button up here. And it will then fill in this timeline with this green bar. Any area of the timeline that has this green bar means the animation is rendered and will most likely play in real time, depending on your system configuration and how much RAM you have. When you're not in real time, you will notice After Effects will warn you saying, this is not real time. It's playing at one and a half frames per second, which is pretty bad, but it's trying to get it rendered for real time. So we'll just click the RAM preview button up here. And we'll just go through every frame and make sure it's rendered. All right, it is now complete. Another quick thing I'm going to do is just end the animation here. As you can see, there's a little bit of dead space here where nothing happens at all. So the playhead's just going to keep going until it hits the end of the project. So... As you can see, there's all this gray here. A quick shortcut is just pressing the end button and that will set the project to end wherever your playhead currently is. And then if I just press the space bar or hit the play button up here, it's now a stop button, but as you can see, there's also a play button there. It will now play our animation. And right now it's playing at about 15 frames per second. I'm screen recording this, so it's using a little bit of extra resources, but hey, it looks a lot better than it did before. So we have a pretty simple 3D text animation right there. Fantastic. So when you want to actually deliver this, you simply use the file menu and choose export. You can render it directly inside of After Effects render queue, or you can actually just send it to the Adobe Media Encoder if you wish. So you can add it to the render queue here. The tab opens up. Output 2, this blue text, or orange text if you're on an older version, is actually a hyperlink. When you click it, you can set a destination and a name. So for example, I can just save this right to the desktop with the name of Comp1. And over here are the quality settings. I get a lot of questions about this. Some people are like, when I export it, it doesn't seem to play right. The main reason might be is you're exporting it with lossless settings and the file size is really huge and your hard drive can't stream it in real time. If you're on a solid state drive, that may not matter. If you click the lossless button, you can change your settings. If you're doing a lot of serious editing with an exported file, it's probably best to use lossless. But if you don't have a lot of hard drive space or a powerful computer, you can do some compression. And also, for the most part, if you're just distributing this stuff online, your final product is going to be compressed anyway. So, for example, we can use the format options here and maybe use something like AVI or H.264. H.264 is pretty standard. And then you can just hit OK there. And this will deliver a lot smaller file size for your product. So once you're all done with that, you just hit the render button. And it's all good to go. So now if I go to my desktop, we have a QuickTime movie of our beautiful masterpiece of our 3D spinning text. So that is just the bare basics of what you can do with the Ray Trace engine in After Effects. If you have any questions, let me know. I'd like to help you. Or maybe just share what you made in After Effects because I'd like to see it. All right. Thanks for tuning into this tutorial. I hope you learned something. And I will see you in the not-too-distant future. Do you want to check out our new comedy series, Ken Cinema Shenanigans? If you do, you can watch the pilot right here. Or do you want to watch another video by us? Then click here.